Hello and welcome to the Tech Lunch Podcast, where we encourage our listeners to learn something new about tech every week. This can range from learning about new and exciting te- applications to the advancements in coding and technology. If you are always learning, you will always be a step above the rest. Take the time during lunch or during a break to listen and learn, kind of like a lunch and learn, but for the years. This podcast will open the listeners' ears to new and exciting technologies they may have not been purviewed to in the past. These topics will range from manufacturing technologies to data collection technologies and everything in between. All right. Hello, I'm Nick. Hello, Matt. Hey, I'm John. And, you know, this week we're going we're to deviate from our last couple topics about 3D printing. You know, John will cry himself to sleep tonight. Yeah, I'm but, sad. Um, you know, <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to kind of jump into a fun little world, you know, data. You know, it's, it's I, you know, we have all these systems and, and processes out there. You know, who was talking about Industry 4.0 at one point in time? And you heard us talking about MQTT. Um, you heard about the data that we can extract from, you know, printers and, you know, servers and switches and, you know, you know, thingamajigs and all the other stuff, you, you know, fan of Disney. Um, but it's, you know, I have this data, but now what in the world do I do with it? And I, I think that's kind of the big ticket item right now. Like, we've all kind of talked about it. You know, I had an old senior manager that used to say that, you know, data is the new oil. Um and, and for me, that rang true because, you know, what, what's the best way than data mining? You know, data mining, data drilling. Um, but you have to collect the data first to be able to get there. So you need to have, you know, a, a, a container of data that, you know, you can use Kibana, MQTT, and that type of stuff. But, you know, I'll turn it over to y'all, you know, because I know I can, you know, yap about, you know, data, data collection technologies and other fun stuff, you know, don't blue in the face and probably pass out talking to y'all. But, you know, what do y'all think? Uh, I mean, I, can wanna, I wanna start if you don't mind it, because I, I'm gonna take it kind of in a non, non-traditional um, kind of direction, because we're thinking IT, we're thinking OT a lot of the times, you know, we're thinking about industry and things like that, but I'm very, so, I, thinking about it on a mathematical level, right? So if you have a line, in order to create any curves or any moves or any quote-unquote change, deviation, you're going to need more points to measure, mm-hmm. right? So it's like you think about it when you're growing. That, that, that chart just goes, that line goes straight up, but you need those points where you were measured at the, you know, at the door or wherever um, and marked down maybe at the doctor or something like that. So the only way that you can really... In my mind, one of the first ways you can really see the data, tell it's telling you something. But this is looking at it maybe, I want to say, in some type of report, and I hate kind of just you know throwing everything at reports. But like a macro it, level? Yeah, if, if you have some type of macro that's throwing up a chart that says, hey, I measured your time t- for completion at this station. Um, here are the last thousand attempts. Here's your percentage of failure. Here's your percentage your tool needed to be replaced. Or if I'm thinking about an, a kind of a, an actual like um, you know line worker working with a tool, like then you can you can predict, so it becomes predictive, and 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 you can you can get it down to like the percentage that it will fail mm-hmm. in this amount of time. You you do you know, in a more statistical base, right. Instead of into a algorithm, right? You know, mathematical right. standpoint. So now, base. whereas I I understand that that's kind of kind of cold and calculated on that side because you also don't if there's any human involved at any point in this process yeah you have that deviation yeah they, i mean i'm going to be honest with you a lot of machines don't work without humans but humans also ruin the machines a lot of the time so of them. yeah i feel like i, I don't want to harp on that too much but like you you press the you press the wrong button you're gonna break something like if you're pressing buttons you don't know what it is what did what did we say it was um uh, push button maintenance. It's like I'm gonna press all these buttons until it does what I want. You can't predict that. That's just something that you've got to kind of adapt to. But in a lot of cases, you can kind of take that, uh, take those points that you've measured, uh, understand kind of any changes that you've made, and, and see if they're even positive or negative. Or if you haven't made any changes, it tells you the direction that you need to go to. Uh, because like if you if you don't adapt. You're just gonna have the same failures, like uh, over and over and over. So, in in that sense, 
it's it's getting you to new yeah. if your company profit levels you know profit mm-hmm. loss if you're going to be more efficient you're going to produce more if you're producing you're if you're providing a service you're going to have happier customers quicker and there's going to be more people coming to you mm-hmm. so it's just mathematically the points in the data tell you if you just listen to what it's saying kind of the direction that everything's going and and honestly it gives you a chance to adjust and before it's too late yeah right um so i don't know if i i don't know if i said anything that you were going to say but i, I was no, going to no, 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 chance no. right but no i i just think that mathematically you you can understand what it's telling you if you just if you if you read and adapt with that yeah, yeah. I, I, and, and i agree with that uh uh I guess what I would add is uh, basically it's, it's a process of getting to uh, what to do with that data. So um, there, there are different ways of doing it. Uh, one way is to set up a unified namespace, and we only subscribe to the things that we want. Mm-hmm. So we don't just uh, take a big aggregate of data and go through every point. If we're only in, interested in a, in a few, yeah, like, in like a, a subscription points. service from yeah. PTT type right. of stuff, yeah. And then from there, once you get the data, you have to transform the data. You have to format it. So the, the data has to be put into a format that can be used by other systems. Right. And uh, once that's done, then you have to be able to leverage those systems uh, to the next level. So if I'm going from a SCADA system to a PLC to a PLC to a unified namespace to a unified namespace to say a uh, uh, MR, MRP or uh, if I'm going to an enterprise system, all those things only care about certain pieces of the data. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So may- maybe the SCADA system don't care so much about um, this button was pushed as to, hey, this level was not reached or we exceeded this level. Mm-hmm. Yeah, tolerance. Uh, tolerance. So it may care about tolerances. Okay. When I go up to above the SCADA system, you know, the MES system may care about, you know, certain things, orders, uh, hey, work, was I just in time? What was my OEE? You know, yeah. things like that. And then when we get in the enterprise system, the enterprise system care more about, hey, uh, um, do orders coming in? Um, and yeah, uh, what, what's the health of the order. company? You know, the, is the, is the uh, blockchain good and those type of things, you know? Are we going to experience some type of uh, delay because uh, we're waiting on materials? Yeah. All these things have to be incorporated. And then you can even go even farther than that when you go with, like, a system with SAP where we're doing work orders and things like that that work along with that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, your logistics and stuff also can tie in there. So all those things play a part. So yeah. I just said a lot of stuff, so what's yeah. the point? So the point is, is when we get these nuggets of data, what do we do with them? We take these nuggets of data to make the company better. How can we make the process more robust? What can we do better and what didn't we do good? Mm-hmm. Uh, where are we uh, uh, concentrating manpower where it doesn't need to be? The overspending. Yeah. You know, what I say overspending, but maybe instead of having... The HPV. Maybe having, yeah. you know... Power per vehicle. Yeah, that too, or... That too, but I mean, like, say, for example, instead of having some person with a chalkboard or a, a clipboard or a whiteboard writing down one, two, three, four tick marks, yeah, now that person can be a quality person for the data to verify that the data we are seeing is correct, yeah. that it mm-hmm. matches what they see on the shop floor. Yeah. So I, I think that's a that's a avenue that you can use. Saying, yeah. saying use the data to adapt. Yeah, but it's also utilizing your resources. Yeah. yeah, I mean... You know, it's like there's there's a lot of studies, you know, out there right now because, you know, one of my projects that I deal with is, you know, that type of, you know, pulling MQTT data and, you know, Industry 4.0 type of stuff. And that's, you know, reading some of the, the lay articles that are, you know, out there right now about it, you know, there, there's stuff all over the place. I mean, different namespaces and stuff like that. If you think about it, there is a aerospace manufacturer that is coming to the landing facility at Kennedy Space Center that is going to be building an AI controlled satellite and spacecraft manufacturing facility. Their lines are going to be controlled by the OEE and the FTC of the production lines. So as they produce more, they're going to request more. If it's if they're producing less, they're going to be producing less. You know, at least that's what you know the the you know what the thing is, you know, what the premise is. However, it's also their maintenance is data driven. Every single thing in their company, to what the latest article came out about them, 
is that, you know, being data driven, they want to know everything about their point, their company, right? It's, it's AI controlled or, you know, AI kind of watched, you know, which, you know, it, it, AI, artificial intelligence, which, you know, everybody, oh, you know, you know we're going to have freaking, you Terminator. know, Terminator walk around, here, you know, shooting people. You know, it don't work that way, you know. Um, we, you I mean, know, we can't predict the future now. No, not, not unless that AI is really good at reading books. Uh, right? That's that um, the problem. Yeah, you're learning. Well, the, the, the flying the Orkman is machine learning. Yeah. Because well. machine learning is the basis to make AI smarter. Yeah. But, you know, if it's pretty much that, hey, guess what? I'm seeing a slowdown here. Let me go ahead and stop the line, you know, so you right. can pick back up. Yeah, I'm not too really worried about that robot taking over and taking over a secretary's position. <laughs> um, and somebody's got to get paper. But and, and, if it, and if it did, that means it doesn't mean that you get rid of the secretary. Right. That means that the secretary now has a new role that that maximizes the company profits. Yeah, exactly. You know, because that at the end of the day, the business has to be healthy. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, you know, there's nothing really out there right now as far as data wise that is you know causing companies to go under. You know, you're calling they're 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 staying afloat because of data. You know, if they if they didn't have the the data that they're working with, they wouldn't be around very long. And like Ed touched on the unified namespace, aka MQTT, the broker system, from the broker system out to a subscriber or to a final processing system. You know, when a, when a when a message comes in via MQTT, it hits the broker and it's converted to a JSON object. Mm -hmm. You know, and then from that JSON object, usually what you can do is you can send that to like you know, MQTT, the, um, uh, Kibana, or any of the other Elk-based services. Uh, Grafana is actually another one now. I've got Grafana running on a, do on a Docker right now uh, for stuff that I'm working on. But what it is, is it parses that data into readable formats that now you can turn around and you can create dashboards over. Yeah. You know, so you have, you know, certain things under your control that you can watch and say, okay, cool. I've had this many failed spot welds. I've had this many cold shots, you know, I've seen somebody, you know, hit the button, you know, this many times because they didn't know what that button meant, right? Um, 37 times because they didn't know what it meant. The record. <laughs> we, I got the record. Give you an award. We, we, you know, we've definitely seen that before. Oh, man. too many times. But, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things of where you can take that data, but then you can drill into it. And you can start really picking out, you know, that type of stuff of, yeah. Okay, cool. Why am I getting these missed shots? You know, these cold shots, or why is my robot telling me that it has a full hard drive, which I know for a fact it doesn't? You know, why do I know? You know, I can monitor the temperature of the enclosure that my hard drive's in on the robot itself, so I know if I have a fan that goes out. Yeah. You know, I know when that's going to happen. I see it coming. You know, but it's also when you start looking at it. You know, if you start digging into that data little by little by little, peeling back the onion, I guess you could say, yeah. you can find where, you know, where that main problem lies. You know, we found one time where, you know, we were having some issues because of an angle, something's got caught inside the tube every couple certain ones. Mm. You know, shoot it out wrong. Woo! Whoops. Yeah. You know, but we found it because the MQTT system was telling us what was going on. Usually it repeats that over and over and right. then you fix it, which would be very clear in your data when that straight line goes through. These are the error messages. It's getting. Oh, you violent, mean when, when, when magically your standard deviation is zero? Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't like this. Well, <laughs> something's not right. It's too perfect. It's, it's like the same thing with the how how we are now with the holes, with the uh, decar de macrization zone. So ba basically, where we still have uh, not fiber. We're still using analog. Yep. And then analog oh, yeah. comes in and gets converted by uh, a converter that goes from analog to digital. Yeah. So you you you're when Nick is saying that he's grabbing these this information, systems now stop at the sensor. Yeah. The sensor is is seen as a, a on off. But inside of the sensor, it's more than on off because it's it's analog in nature that's converted to digital. Because in, any sensor is going to be like a transducer, a piezoelectronic uh, element, or something. So it's something that's going to be converted. But you have to have something that takes those 
signals to analog and make them into digital. Yeah. So now you're getting actual logs and data on a on a sensor level, on a device level, where you didn't have that. Right. You know, you would have to log into a web server or something, or you would have to hook a pin in a no, or, or, physically. No, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump on this. You know, and you know. You say fifteen, say fifteen years ago, 15 or more. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want to go back, how far you want to go? When you first jumped into this business, when you first jumped into working, you know, with you know machines, HMIs, and you know all the other fun stuff. You know, before you know it was the switch panels. Um, how easy would have having that data at your fingertips would that have made your job? Would have made it tremendously easy because you would have to you would have to watch the machine for mm-hmm. hours. And then maybe you would see something happen. Oh, okay. That or you would have to take the system and break the system into segments and test the segment system as segments yeah. and see which part of the system as a segment didn't work. Mm-hmm. So it was that a lot. Sense. It was a lot of time and a lot of work. Yeah, I, I want to give an example too, and I'm and I know it's not as techy or anything like that as as usual. But so I used to work in retail as a store manager. Um, I definitely noticed some trends. We work with year year over year trends, comp and things like that. You change your all your KPIs, you know, similar similar ideals where you're just trying to produce, right? So I noticed something every Sunday we do we would uh, we would have a recap of the last week and we would calculate every time a manager was running the sales floor, it was their their turn to run the sales floor, and we would calculate how that week went with all of their quote unquote segments. Right? So pretty straightforward. But these are all points of data, right? We took each point of data, and we, we, we tracked it throughout the week. I, I taught these guys how to use Excel and input everything day by day. And, f- and we, we set the formulas up, and we set the, the extra books up on that Excel page to show month by quarter by year the difference that each day that we do makes. So we use, I use that data directly to, to, to show the, the, the gravity of the, the changes that we were making behavior like with just behaviors and, and, and tendencies, not even with actual sensors or anything like that. And and it it Well let me just tell you Well it, in a sense it was sensors because you had to you had to scan barcodes, right? Well yeah it's true, that's true we were and, and the barcode scanning would tell us the you know profit that we would get that day, so the sales that we would make, how much you know the average sale would be and, and how many units it would average as well. But a lot of those things like you take into account like what's going on and it you know it it kind of shows and i would say this a lot the vision so the data will show you the vision of what efficient or what good should look like what what efficiency should look like and and to be honest with you that pretty much won me like a wall full of awards with just putting the data in a way that we could read it and see the change and, and 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 watch it in action. Now I take that example because I, it was it was it was too simple to do, but it's it's the whole idea encompassed. Mm-hmm. You think about the project leads that we have here. I mean, you're a project lead, Nick. So, you, what, in a lot of those cases, when you're talking to management, you're taking previous data, you, or which which how a system is set up, and you're taking the the possible changes. And maybe even putting a number value to that, like, hey, we're gonna this should potentially, you know, increase jobs per hour or you know, mm-hmm. FTC, whatever, like how many we can produce, how mm-hmm. much of this we can produce, and we can tie a number value to that and effectively use that number value to build to to build the value in the eyes of those that, that aren't reading the data as much. So right. use the data yourself to to get your point across. So I I will go in retail, it's, it's another point to that. Mm-hmm. Not only is it telling me sales, it's telling me what's selling. Yeah, it's true. It's telling me how long it takes for it to sell. <laughs> and it's telling me uh, what's my best seller. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing. It's like Wonder Woman's lasso. With When you take data, whatever system you use, right. it is the central point of truth. You can't manipulate the data. No. The data is going to tell what's going on. Yeah, exactly. And I don't have to fuss with first, second, third shift. We don't have to make fashions and fight against each other. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's simple. Hey, yeah, black we, or white. We made, this, we made this. 
And the data is not leaning one way or the other. Right. The, the like data is what skewed. it is. Yeah. The data is what it is. Yeah, the data, data does not lie. Yeah. But no. But you're, you're absolutely right because I, I mean, I, I, that that is a piece of it. But it is what we would have weekly and quarterly and monthly meetings on. Is like, hey, what's your best seller? Tell me your top five. Okay, these three items. Huh? That's the same brand. Make it a table. Put it at the front. Like. That was the easiest decision in the world. And it's like, okay, I'm going to go ask corporate for more of this of this one product that's selling. And the second that it dips, goes back to what it was. Like, we're setting up, like, these key products that catch your eye and everything is kind of makes sense because, we, you know, your impulse buys are actually what you make the most of. Everybody needs socks yeah. and underwear. Yeah, everybody needs socks and underwear. I mean, hopefully everybody's got <laughs> socks and underwear on right now. And whatever's please. at the register. Yeah, and whatever's at the register. And, yeah. and like, fidget, fidget, fidget spinners and, 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 like, candy, yeah. like, little things. It, 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 they just go. And I'm going to be honest with you, as as much as, as those are annoying to me to clean up or, or to everyone because they're just kind of used and abused and gone and or just like littered everywhere mm-hmm. they existed for a reason they had the highest profit return and and it's because we put it right there like they're waiting in line they're looking right at it mm-hmm. you I don't know if you've noticed in a lot of these stores yep. is they if the, even if there is no one waiting in line, you have to go through like a little bit of a Z in the line where yep. there's products everywhere. Yep. Yep. And they're a little You've been to uh, hobby stores? Yep. You know, hobby stores are notorious for it all the way yeah, up. i got to stay away from Michael's. Gross, grocery stores? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they, they do that They've too. done studies to say if you go through the produce section, you spend more money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's why That's why I intentionally, when I go to a grocery store, yeah. grow up, go a different way. Yeah. Because you, it, that area... It's the it's the first point you come in and it it routes you through the store. Yeah, mm-hmm. it directs you. It's the same thing. It's the same thing with your business. You're directing your profits through yeah. the company. Now I'll say this. Yeah. You know who the king of that is? Mm-hmm. It's also the king of possible divorces. IKEA. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and you and IKEA is perfect because you yeah. don't have a choice. You only can go one way. Yep. And one way only. Yep. There is no going back. And you know, it I, really I, I, it's, it's like, and, I, and I joke about that. About you know, hey, it could cause some divorces. Yeah. Mm, they don't lie about that one either. You'd be surprised how many couples argue about putting something together out of a box. Yeah. You know, cool. Look, I bought yeah. this thing. It comes with eight boxes. You didn't yeah. know that you went to IKEA. You know, we, I, we're getting off the data topic, but we have to talk about this for a minute. IKEA. <laughs> but you didn't, you didn't know you went to IKEA to go buy something, but you need to leave with a semi truck full of freaking boxes. Yep. You know, right? And now you're going to put it all together and you're still going to get six free screws. Yep. You know? It's Which, because I think, think that might be a data topic screws. because they know to add six more screws to the hey, bag. Yeah. So you're at the end of the day looking at your instructions going, I think I missed something. Yep. Yeah, data's everywhere. <laughs> and, 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 if you, and if you run your company that way, if you listen to the data and not and not be irrational and not do something because it's always been done that way, and when you have something happen, you dig into it by examining the data yeah. to come up with a solution. And the data will point that person to where the problem is. I don't have to have a committee of 50 people to have two-hour meeting when I can look at the data and say, oh, okay. Hey, this definitely is a problem. We need to concentrate right here. Yeah. It's like, you know, I look at the data for, you know, for example, for the podcast and the YouTube channel and stuff like that. And I kind of dig in, you know, kind of seeing what's going on. You know, I look at the stuff on uh, TikTok and, you know, whatever else we got posted. You know, just kind of, you know, look, look at you know, what people are saying, how people are getting involved in it. And it kind of points us to, you know, kind of what's going on. You know, for example, that's kind of why you noticed this week we kind of, you know, deviated to a more tech-focused, yeah. um, you know, podcast. We have seen, you know, a little bit. We think we overstayed our welcome a little bit. Um, I'm going to be here for a while. For the, um, the, 3D the, the 3D printing stuff. But, you know, <laughs> we're going to get back to it. You know, don't get me wrong. We're definitely going to get back to it. Um, you know, but we're going to cover some more things that, you know, we think people might be eh, a little bit more interested in. You know, it's like maybe eventually, um, I think we talked about AGVs at one point, but we may get back to that. Um, oh, man. There's so much, there's so much, so many new things coming out with well, AGVs so these days though, and, and, and the new stuff going on. But again, that's another data topic because, and I, I say that because one of the projects I deal with is, is the AGVs. Um, but it's pulling data from them. 
You know, it's telling me where they're at on the side of my shop floor. Why are they stopped? Why are they not moving? It's sure because the darn thing don't have a flat tire. They're hard percent plastic tires. <laughs> you know, it's, it's not because they ran out of gas. They're battery electric and they got charge mats everywhere. No, it's because somebody put their foot out in front of it and sat there and was talking to freaking Joe Blow. You know, it's because it's something blocked by a scan field. Mm-hmm. Or the forklift, Gavin. Yeah, or the forklift ran over and it's DOA on the side of the freaking line side blast. <laughs> you know, it's just... <laughs> No, they're, they're and that, that, is, that is data proven. <laughs> that, that, is, that, that is data proven. If you have anything you like and you're working in manufacturing, it will get ran over by a forklift. Um, that's just, it's proven data at this yeah. point. <laughs> um, the statistics don't lie on that. As long as it's not a body part, I'm okay. <laughs> we've had that too. Yeah, we've had that too. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's one of those things of if you appreciate anything that, you know, that you might not want to lose, don't put it anywhere near an inexperienced forklift driver. Um, Make eye contact with them. Yes, please. Um, <laughs> Point but, where you're going. Yeah, seriously, yeah. I'm going this way. That, 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 that's another data-driven topic, though. You know, because we've definitely seen that. That's, and we learned that because right. <laughs> we learned that you learn from doing. We start pointing, you start getting hit less. <laughs> but you know, the other thing is, is data in the grand scheme of things, especially like you know, with me for the AGVs or for you know, shop floor devices and stuff like that. Yeah, it stops the utter. I didn't do it. Um, you know, most of y'all know, I, you know, me and John work in IT. Mm. You know that Ed works in OT. You know, we've had this conversation a few times. Um, uh, however, we both agree on one thing. The one thing, that one comment that drives us all nuts more than anything in this world is, I didn't do it. Y'all, y'all, y'all were caught with, uh, with your finger in the cookie jar. You know, I didn't do it. I didn't hit the button. I got you on one t- on, on, on on my server saying that you hit the button. I was say the first the first person that like it wasn't me. Hey man, come here and talk to me real quick. It was probably yeah. you. What did you do? <laughs> but it's like, and the thing is, if you think about it, if you have all this stuff, sometimes you you don't get the usernames, but however, you get the timestamps. So yeah. you can go back and look and see what's going yeah. on. You get, you know, the Kibana locks where you can put it on dashboards, yeah. which goes into our visualization discussion that we've had before, yeah. which we may eventually revisit, um, and where you can put those up on, you know, on, on boards and stuff like that so people can see kind of what the, the growing pattern is, you know, doing pattern analysis. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the greatest thing about data is you can do a pattern analysis. You can do heat maps. You can do, you know, and that type of stuff. If you're dealing with a facility, a facility, maintenance facility, freaking logistics facility, uh, retail facility, stuff like that, yeah. you can have a heat map. Your heat map tells you where people congregate. It tells you where things are being bought the most. If you think about it, if somebody comes into a, a, a retail store and they, you don't have to worry about watching where they're going. You don't have to worry about that. You just sit back and watch. Because if it's, okay, cool, I saw, I, you know, I'll have to just count my racks at the end of the day. You know, you scan, 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 scan. I could take that, throw that onto a heat map using Power BI or something like that on an overview of your store and actually point out where your heavy hit places are. Mm-hmm. Based on, if I know that's where that barcode is used at, where that table is being at, I can show you where your heat map is. So now I know where to move some of your stuff around, and I'm going to throw a couple things in there to get their eye from the same people, like what you're talking about with the tables. Yep, yep. And what that's going to do, that's going to move your heat map counterclockwise, because what it's going to do is going to cycle counterclockwise to the store and bid the registers, right? However, if it's just single point and it's going counterclockwise, you don't want that. You want clockwise, counterclockwise, or clockwise. So you can see, so it hits every part of that store all the way back, more likely to sell something. You know, it's it's like the same thing in restaurants. When you look at a, when you look at a menu, you're trying to figure out that heat map point. You know, you know that the first thing when they, somebody opens a menu, they're looking for someone to drink. Mm. You know, what 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 are your drink specials? First question you get asked. Followed by appetizers. We're gonna look at your appetizers. We need to do. You're gonna start with the cheapest one first. That's why you always see us start with freaking nachos. Nachos, fries, whatever. Not always really starts. Nachos, uh, yeah, best. You know, always starts the top one, and then it goes into salads. Or soups, or something, mm-hmm. and then it moves into your heavier hit items. So what you're doing is you're also go food by weight. 
Mm-hmm. So then, you know, at the end of the day, when you do your food bills and stuff like that, you're looking at it going, okay, cool, guess what? I got, I, I know that I sold more things off this third page than I sold, sold off the, or the, the back page than I saw off the front two pages. So, yeah. okay, cool. Now I know I can trim my menu down because now I'm getting this. And I know my clientele are buying the higher priced items. So why don't I make them feel special and drop, then dip the item a little bit in price and see if my prices go up. All you're doing is a heat map. Yeah. I mean, and I think it works in, in both both situations. It works in multiple ways with that because if you're cooking, it's, you know, that you, that cook doesn't have to know as many recipes now. Yep. Right? And, and, and in, like, the retail space that you're saying is, like, I think it's a double-edged sword. It cuts both ways. It could increase your profits. Now, that's granted, like, your, your way is ideal if everyone's paying for it. But I have learned... People don't like paying for stuff sometimes. They're just going to try to put it in their pocket and walk yeah. out. You're still going to have to you know, monitor those areas. But no, no, no. I'm saying I, th- I agree with you, though, because it works with you because you still got to try to push sales. Mm-hmm. So you still got to focus on those hot zones. But also, when when I did, I've, I've done like maybe four or five uh, inventories with like per store. And which is terrible. But and y'all, I'm gonna I'm gonna just apologize real quick. We are gonna go over some our normal thirty minute time, just because we're actually got a pretty decent conversation yeah. going. Data data is oil, man. <laughs> it's gonna be a little longer. But yeah, so so in that in that circumstance though, I we were able to to pinpoint your top five, top ten, top twenty theft areas, yeah. theft items, mm. and then you can say, well, what's what's going on? Why are these Why are these getting gone so easy? Oh, it's because it's in this dark corner back here. You don't have the light on. You you find the problem with the data, yep. with how much is getting stolen in that corner. What about this? There's small items. Okay, well, maybe we need to put them in a case. Like, stuff like that. You can't mm. really keep an eye out on that. Uh, this item here, uh, uh, there's no real way to put a sensor on it or anything like that, so it's kind of, okay, we'll put them in the case too. We, we, when you start doing those things, it, it not only will help with your, you know, amount sold, mm-hmm. but it'll help with amounts stolen, your, yeah. your, your, your negative, which, you know, in a lot of places is why places are going like kind of out of business. It, it's, you know, creating hard targets. Yeah. You know, I, I'm, uh, if, you know, I'm a Homeland Security guy. So, you know, my, that's where my background lies. My background lies in security and stuff like that. So, you know, with some of that stuff, you're also creating, you know, pinch points. You know, which way am I going to send somebody, you know, something was to happen? You know, do I need to start doing a floor pollute? You know, get people out there to to cover these open areas Mm -hmm. where there could be no one there. You know, but, you know, and the thing is, is, you know, remember also when you're dealing with data, any data for that matter, you have so many legal ramifications that you must follow, Yeah. you know, before you end up in, you know, a world of, you know, you know, no fun, yeah. you know, you're, you, you, you know, when it comes to data collection, even in your own company, you can end up in a, in a, in a world, of no fun pretty quickly. So I think another way to look at that, when we talk about, you know, Hey, we, we, uh, we're losing product. Every company must do a assessment. So yeah. they should do a risk assessment Yeah. to know that yeah, exactly. these, these products will entice that type of behavior, and that's yep. and that's so, driven through the through data. Yeah. Like. So, but but the thing is also that risk assessment should also be done in in manufacturing companies that make widgets or make any type of product. Yeah. Keys. Or, you know what 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 is? I guess what I'm saying risk assessment risk assessment this way. What are the factors that can keep the process from working? Yeah. Could could it be someone not following the process? Could it be not having materials? Mm-hmm. Could it be uh, a portion of the line is stopped, so I got a, a bottleneck? Uh, could it be that my uptime on a piece of equipment, because it's overly complicated, is is higher in an area? Could it be that I have a? Could it be that I have a actual area that's more than a bottleneck? If it stops, the whole line stops. Yeah. So those are also things that you can do with data, with risk assessment. That I think you could apply to other 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 markets too, mm-hmm. but I think that's something that you can use, and then you can also use data that's returned from the customer experience, yeah, and 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 yeah. that can drive the next year's model mm-hmm. without you having to go do surveys and stuff. That that information can be polled, you know, if the user agrees to to allow you to take that data. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, we used to we used to call it um when you see you used to get an HR in the Marine Corps we used to call it the ice surveys. I mean, you fill out an ice survey before you leave or whatnot. You know, how was my experience? Well, guess what? You you're, you're in an admin building. Yeah, never good. You know, um, so you know it is what it is. But you know the the definitely use of surveys. You know, collects data. It's an easy data collector. You know, it's like it's it's one of those things of where, for example. You know, I hate to go back to retail, but retail is the easiest target. Yeah, really. I mean, it is absolutely the mm-hmm. simplest target in the world. Um, when it comes down to data-driven shopping, you know, and y'all, if you if you if you if you own retail or work in retail and stuff like that, don't you know, fuck, don't don't you know, come at my head here. All right, it's if you think about it, if I put a tablet inside your store. You know, you do, you see it now at the gas stations where they hit it. How was your experience? Right? Yeah. Well, why don't you do that at full retail locations? Yeah. You know, how was your experience? Oh, it was good. Okay, cool. Here, if you fill out this survey, we'll give you a discount next time you come back, which most places do. You know, here, fill this out. Well, why don't you do it on the spot? You know, you sit there, you fill that out and say, this, this is what I'm seeing, you know, stuff like this is what I don't yeah. like, this is what I do like. Right? You get all that data kind of tied into everything else. Or what do we miss? What do we not have that you're looking for? Because then you could take that and tie that to your heat map. I, I like heat maps because my heat maps tell me everything that I need to know. Yeah. Um, you know, and it tells me it in a visual standpoint. I'm a visual learner. You know, I like data. I'm a very data-driven individual. But I need to know numbers. So if you show me heat map, I can visualize my numbers right then and there. So if you tell me that, hey, guess what? I got, you know, 15, 16 complaints from zone two, you know, up here. But... It's only because I don't have this one thing or this one thing wasn't easy to find. Let me pull that forward. Guess what? Now all those now all those complaints disappear. Yeah. Within minutes. Now that, that clears up on that heat map. You can mark it as complete. You can mark you mark you set up your task list. You can slowly but surely get down your red zones. You know, unless those red zones are sales zones. You know, if you if you can run multiple things based on sales. And and word of mouth is uh what what every company should want. Right. You exactly. should want the customer telling other customers yeah. about yeah. their experience. That's true. I mean, to be honest with you, that was so... There's a couple things that we tried. Um, walking around with the iPad was, was one of them. You know, kind of incentivizing the team to say, hey, if we can hit this number of, you know, surveys, then I'll give you guys, you know, pizza party or or I'll... We'll go bowling or something like that, you know. Anything for so, food. Something's happened. Yeah, and they, they loved it. You know, they actually worked harder when I said, I'll get you a Starbucks. And they all started freaking out about that, which was, like, the cheapest. So I was like, I think you should do this every week. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's every day. But even even in the sense of just of the survey with the tablet in there, like, there, with, with retail, there's issues with location. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to find flip-flops in Alaska. Unless I'm at the beach, of course, but you know what I'm saying. Like, you're not going to find flip flops like in the middle of Alaska. Mm. You're not going to find it in Antarctica and Canada, probably. There's probably beaches in Canada that I have no idea. Oh, yeah, there is. But, but still, all, all I'm saying is is that there's limited space, and, and if one store held everything in, in an entire company's inventory, that's every single store that they have needs to be massive. Yep. Okay? Even Walmart doesn't have every single item sa- the exact same in every single store. So it, it's almost impossible to do. So in that sense, I walked around with the iPad, and I was like, hey, you were looking for this, um, I think Rick and Morty was, was, was popular at the time. You were looking for this Rick and Morty shirt, right? You mean like this jacket, these shorts, these socks? Like, boom, they bought everything offline. That sale goes to my store. It ships to their house. I don't even see the product. I don't have to clean up after the product. They, they just walked in to use my iPad. Right? So it was, it was, it's a brilliant idea, and it was also what we used to do the surveys. So it was like, it was kind of, it was, you know, two, two birds, one stone. And, and not only did it give us the, the response back with the data mm-hmm. from the customers, granted, if we only got a couple, it was a bit skewed. Uh, but at the end of the day, you add them all up. I think we, we began breaking records with survey count. When we started doing that. Yeah, because people want to tell you what's going on. And people wanted to know. And so then the other stores in the district started doing that until a certain point it was, um, there was a bit of draw pushback from, um, from you know, management. And they were saying, hey, you can't just follow people. 
people were following people around begging for surveys. And I was like, that's not the point. That's not the essence of it. You're, you're getting fake. You're getting outliers. You're getting fake data, right? So on a large scale, it's hard to fake the data. On a smaller scale, you get less surveys and everybody's competing. You can fake that data in yeah. that sense. But, um, but the, the, the point remains true is that I can make my tiny little store the the same size as every other store I can have any of the same items as any of the other stores and I can keep that going so it's it was that that connection to our data and our you know database of, of things helped our sales like, yeah. that's and that's transformation yeah. that's that's transformation that's transforming a brick and mortar into you know more than a brick and mortar like mm-hmm. a, a yard sale will never outsell uh, online uh, e-commerce. Never. It just can't compete. You right. can't compete with e-commerce. There's more customers online. Yeah. There's um, you Less know, easier overhead. access. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you may have to pay a little bit in shipping, but at the end of the day... <laughs> and if you think about it, most of that's like, you know, your your benefit of Industry 4.0 because the data topic is a pillar of Industry 4.0. Yeah. It, it is a overall pillar. It is not a, um, you know inside methodology inside one of the pillars now it's a complete pillar you know that we must be looking at how to optimize our data usage you know and that's something that we're getting at you know we're doing data driven maintenance data driven IT and of course you know data driven you know logistics you know on time logistics you know showing up when they need it the most you know buy the data you know letting us know how many parts to order you know on a routine basis how to yeah. ship them do they need to be air freighted do they need to be ship freighted how do they need to get here you know, it's, you know, one of those things, you know, spare parts, you know, are we running low on the spare parts? I keep replacing the darn thing, you know, and, you know, do I have problems with these threads? Cause somebody keeps cross-threading the darn thing, you know, is it, it is it, it, it's one or the other, you know, what, what am I dealing with? Do I keep having a sensor failing because I have a high voltage scenario, mm. you know, why, why is this doing this, you know? Um, but you know, that is, you know, where we're going, you know, it, it's definitely better than where we've been. Yeah, it helps you with, you know, preventative maintenance. It helps you with, you know, efficiency, like increasing it. And, and it also helps you with, um, you know, maintaining. Uh, like, I don't, data should kind of be at the forefront of every decision. But it also shows that the Industry 4.0 methodology is not just to manufacturing. Yeah. Just everything. You know, it's even your small mom and pop manufacturers that are out there right now. You know, your vinyl cutter guys, your your three printers, you know your you guys out there, you know running the additive manufacturing side of the house, mm-hmm. and you know retail, you know for any of it, you know industry 4.0 is taking over, you know. Well, but you know as of now we got you know, we got all the data now we got to figure out what we're gonna do with it. Well, think about Unstar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh I mean, man. Uh, Unstar. I mean, that, I know we've a lot we're a lot more advanced now than when Unstar started, but they're still relevant. Yeah. They are. I'm just saying that yeah. we know where it started. Oh, when OnStar first where, came where it started out, to where yeah. it is now. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm saying thing. like now you're able to uh, get data from automobiles or like say with Tesla when they need to do updates, they can do real time updates yeah. to uh, improve the uh, performance of a car. Um, I mean, and some of the other other things that people don't think about is IoT and IoT. Those mm-hmm. things are all part of that that structure, and then everybody produces data. I, I'll give you an yeah. example. One of the one of the companies or one of the industries that's that's uh, adopted this technology uh, for well over twenty plus years. It's the oil industry. It's called down the whole data. Yeah. They've been doing it for years. Mm-hmm. They've been monitoring every sensor and temperature and all these things, and that's how they know how things work when they break down. When they're gonna get a failure point, and they know these things because they got twenty years of data mm-hmm. that they've been analyzing. Mm-hmm. So, like these companies have the data, they just haven't done anything with it. It's just, yeah, it's, it's data at risk. I bet you, I bet you also NASA when they made that new alloy when they were three D printing in space, or that I guess they weren't three D printing it in space, but they generate they created a new alloy that's supposed to be strong enough to be printed and survive in space. Mm-hmm. That, how do you get the data for that? Yeah. Or how do you how do you get the like how do you know how to make that? It's it's you know previous tests. You know it's like if you think about it, you got like Firefly Aerospace. Firefly yeah. Aerospace failed on their first launch. You know Firefly Aerospace made it what was it? 
2.13 minutes into orbit. Um, it, 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 you know, went through its abort mode at, you know, right about max Q. Um, so kind of like what happened with the um, uh, Blue Origin rocket the other day, yeah. where it jets in the capsule at max Q. Um, but the thing is, if you don't know what max Q is, maximum damage and pressure on, a, on, a, on an aircraft, that's a whole other math problem we'll have to deal with later. <laughs> um, you know, but they were able to collect, I think they said somewhere around, um, what was it? Something like, uh, like one million data points. That's a lot. And they realized that most of their abort was due to a bad reading from a sensor that came loose inside the engine bay. What All the way down to a sensor problem? that was yeah. vibrating. They realized it came disconnected and was vibrating inside the engine manifold. Hmm. On the outside of the engine manifold, bouncing around, that now hmm. they were to go back there and retool that. The um, when you watch the, the latest interview on um, um, Everyday Astronaut, you know they were also having issues with the locks. You know, going from liquid oxygen to um, or non-liquid oxygen to liquid oxygen, and, and vice versa. Um, the the vehicle was was taking in too much of it, then mm. that the the GCE equipment, the ground the ground equipment, could not keep up. Yeah. So they had to modify all of that. To keep up the tank pressures, to keep the tank pressures up, to keep the engines fed, it's you know they took all this data and threw it into the next successful launch campaign, which hopefully is coming very very soon. You know, well you see Firefly the the second the second rocket of Firefly to take off. Mm -hmm. You know, not saying that you know you like you know it's it's the same thing you see with like Astra. You know, Astra yeah they they've had some issues, but they're getting back there, slowly but surely. Yeah, and. Even you know, Firefly's building the lunar lander. Oh my God, yeah. they're gonna launch a lunar lander soon on a on a on a, a Falcon Nine, heading towards the moon, where they have to use TLI or translunar injection, and they have to and their 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 goal to what the um, senior manager for spacecraft was talking about is they're going to record the entire flight hmm. to the moon in in depth and HD. And they're going to have cameras positioned on the aircraft, on, on the aircraft at all times. For, and also they're going to have sensors recording that data on flight. So they can help maximize engine performance on their next version that they send out. Yeah. You know, all that, you know, to, to benefit. Yeah. What do I do with the data? I, did, I use the data to make, you know. And inform decisions. Yeah. You know, and that's what it's there for. You know, but I, I think that, you know, we've kind of hit our, our, our point. Um, so, you know, I want to, you know, say, you know, sorry, we, you know, we went over time about 47 minutes in. But, you know, we want to say thank you. You know, everybody who's listening in, everybody who's, you know, doing something, you know, let us know what you're doing with data. You know, we're kind of curious. Um, you know, but, you know, remember, data is new oil. Data is going to help you out. Um, you know, I appreciate y'all listening in. You know, we never thought we'd get this far. You know, you know, thank you for everybody who's listening across the world. You know, highly appreciate it. You know, we'll get back to some of our 3D printing stuff eventually. Doing some more tech-related stuff. If y'all have anything interesting you want to hear, you know, let us know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'll turn it over to the guys for the last little bit. I'd just like to say we appreciate all the support. Appreciate everybody listening. And uh, uh, stay tuned. Yeah. Also, you know, same thing from my side. It's uh, like I always say thank you for listening um, because, you know, a lot of the times there's nobody listening which is fine but if we can start teaching some people how to do things we'll have less of the problems that we have currently so mm -hmm. um yeah we thanks guys thanks for listening stay tuned we're, we're coming up with some things here soon so there you go have a good one have a good one. thank you for listening to the tech at lunch podcast where we hope you learned something about tech during your break or during your lunch time if you did please give us a follow to prevent missing future episodes. If you have any ideas or something you want to hear or learn about, please send us a show idea to podcast at vulcanora.com. Hope you have a good rest of the day and continue learning.